for five or so. I saw that you had a lot of uh, sandwiches and stuff in there, but I hope you can squeeze in a bit of vegetable curry. And I'll explain to you soon enough what's, what it's for. So, we're the Green Gosser. I'm Olivia Waters, its managing director. And we are passionate about sustainable food. For us, sustainable food means seasonal and local. Our passion is focused in three areas. Number one, we want to make seasonal and local food, food cool and convenient. Number two, we want to bring people around, make a community around their love of food. And number three, we want to reignite people's passion for cooking at home. But before I explain to you what you're eating and why, what we're eating and what our company is, I'd like to explain to you why we're here before you today. We're here to apply for a 75,000 pound grant from your food strand, and we're going to demonstrate to you how we meet the two following criteria. Your first criteria being improving access to appropriate, diverse, and sustainable food in areas where it's limited. And two, demonstrating the positive role of food in a social context, or how food can contribute to community cohesion. In the next 15 minutes, my colleagues and I will explain to you how we meet this criteria. We'll be starting with Solomon, our sales director, who will explain to you exactly what our product is and our service. Followed by Sumi, our communications director, who will talk to you about who our audience is and how we're going to market to them. Rosie will come up then. She's our operations director, and she will discuss how sustainability is at the core of what we do. I'm going to wrap up with a little bit about financials, of course, and some concluding remarks. So without further ado, Solomon. Thank you. And hello, everybody. And as Olivia said, my name is Solomon, and I'm the sales director of The Green Grocer. Also, as Olivia said, the Green Grocer has a number of passions, and it's about making local and seasonal vegetables um, convenient and cool, and also about igniting people's passions about coming together over food and cooking food. And what I'm going to talk to you here today about are the basics. The what, what is our product, where, where do we sell, and also how, how do we sell the service. So first thing I'm going to start off with the product, what is it? Well, it's this right here, and I'm going to pass it over so you can have a little look inside, I'll just give it to you there, and you can pass it down if you like, and just have a look through it. So, at its heart, it's very simple. It's a variety of local and seasonal vegetables. You'll see there's a blue sachet in there, which contains a number of um, measured herbs and spices. And as you're having a look there, there's also a recipe inside there too. So it's everything you need to make, um, to make a sustainable, delicious evening meal there. So, the green grocer assumes that our customer has the very basics, the oil, the salt, and the pepper. We also sell for customers where it's required, measured portions of rice and pasta, if they desire and they don't have it at home. We don't serve meat, however, our recipes where appropriate contain the option of adding meat and how that could be integrated into the meal. And you'll notice there that the vegetables are whole rather than chopped. And that's to maintain freshness, and that's also to satisfy um, the demands that we were hearing for our customers to be able to both prepare as well as cook the food themselves. Now, going on to cost, we keep, keep it very simple and very affordable. At any given day, the Green Grocer sells three different meal options. For example, the vegetarian that you're eating and that can make, be made from that bag there. We've averaged our prices, so any two-person portion bag costs four pounds, any four-person portion bag costs eight pounds, and any six-person portion bag cost £12. And as I said before, the rice and the pasta, the measured amounts, are a small additional fee on top of that. So secondly, where do we sell our location? Initially, the green grocer is located primarily, firstly, as we can see here, um, a stall outside Highbury and Islington Station, and then also a shop in Hoxton. We want to have two locations in the same area, so we can build a real strong local presence and to become a part of the community. Highbury Instington Station has over a quarter of a million people walking through in and out of its gates every single week, and Hoxton is particularly notable for its high local footfall. So that's where we're selling. And I have to go on to talk about how we're selling. And there I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, our service. We are called the Greengrocer because we want to provide a service that's reminiscent of traditional local greengrocers, with an ethos of focusing on our customers, our employees, and the product that we sell. Our staff are passionate, just like we are, about food, and bringing people together about food, and reigniting that passion about cooking themselves. 
So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a customer experience that is enjoyable, where people no longer feel like anonymous consumers, but actually valued partners. And to help illustrate a little bit more about how we work, we're just going to play a very short clip uh, charting our customer journey. This is Matt. Matt lives in high green with his friends, named Becky. Matt is young and active. He likes going out with his mates, and he fancies himself a bit of a ladies man. <laughs> Matt loves being healthy, but he doesn't always have time to plan his midday meals properly. Especially because he's not confident enough to cook without a recipe. One day, on the way home from work, Matt noticed the green grocer van and stopped to talk to one of our helpful members of staff, Sol. Sol explained that any of the meals could be supplemented with meat or fish and that all the ingredients were sold by Porsche. Matt liked the sound of the vegetable Thai curry and thought he might cook it for his flatmates that evening using the chicken thighs he had sitting in his freezer. Sol recommended the four person bag so Matt could have leftovers for lunch the next day. And because Matt didn't like mushrooms, Sol replaced them with carrots. Matt found the recipe easy to follow and the meal delicious. And unlike usual when he cooked from a recipe, he hadn't paid for lots of leftover ingredients that he didn't know what to do with. He loved it so much that he decided to go online to see what other recipes the great grocer had to offer. He signed up to the Twitter feed, and now he gets regular updates on what's in season, and which recipes are coming up. So that's the story of Matt, and how he joined the great grocer at our table. Thank you, Simon. Hi, my name is Sumi. I'm going to be telling you a little bit about our market research, our target audience, and then I'm going to say something about how we plan to reach those people. Now, this part of the presentation is really here to show you how we've married up our driving aims with what we know our audience wants. And just to remind you of what they are, it's making sustainable food convenient and cool, reigniting people's love for food and cooking at home, and bringing people together over food. Now, one of the major assets of this company is that as founding directors, we really understand the people and the area for which we've developed this product. We all live in North East London, and the people we've developed it for are ourselves, our friends, and the communities in which we live. But, of course, we did just go off that. We conducted detailed market research with our target audience using surveys and interviews. We spoke to industry professionals. We contacted local councils to see what was possible in each area. And we've taken research from government departments and market trend experts on board. And what this has really shown us is that local and seasonal is a growing market. A recent DEFRA report has shown that it's doubled in the last three years, growing from 15 to 27% over the recession. Most of that demand is coming from central London, and the most popular category to source locally is vegetables. And I just want to say something about our competition as well. For us, places like Pod and Leon and their growth over the recession really prove that there's a strong market in London for local seasonal food. The Green Grocer places itself in the market between veg box schemes and supermarkets. At the end of veg box schemes, they have awkward delivery times and they tend to lead to a lot of food waste because people don't know how to cook everything. And at the other end, you've got supermarkets, which are incredibly anonymous when you go through them. Our single meal product is portioned and available to pick up on the way home from our friendly staff, which is really our unique selling point. So how are we going to reach these people? Our point of sale promotions will have loyalty cards. And we'll also have launch events, launch events to promote new outlets. We'll have a wealth of information online, and we'll also have blogs and forums. But we really wanted to go further than that. Our core audience are young professionals aged 26 to 34. They are the generation that instigated online collaboration and sharing. 
They've unlocked an entirely new way for them all to feel appreciated, to innovate, and to create community. And they've achieved all of this to fit with their incredibly busy <coughs> and social lives. Now, the Green Grace understands this because we're part of it, and we've tailored our product for it. Anyone who wants to can join our network for free. There they'll be able to access and share information on local events, sustainable food ideas, home growing, and they'll be able to link up to our partners. It's a place for everyone to share recipes and promote their own initiatives, and most importantly, collaborate with us over our product and service development. So one of the ideas here is that we will have regular competitions, allowing customers to champion their own recipes, and winners will be distributed as part of our product with their name on it, so they feel really real ownership over it. They'll also get a chance to suggest and vote on where all our surplus food goes gets donated in the local area. Now finally, we know that being online no longer means being stuck at your computer. The mobile web has completely changed the way that companies and customers interact with each other. And this generation wants to be kept in the know while they're on the run. So, as you saw in the video, our regular Twitter feeds will keep all our customers up to date on what's in season and what recipes are coming up. So they always know exactly when to come and visit us. And more than that, our Twitter subscribers will receive regular discount passwords to encourage both new and repeat customers. So I hope that's given you a bit of an idea about how we plan to market to our audience and who they are. Now I'm going to hand over to Rosie, who's going to tell you about why sustainability is at the heart of everything we do. Thank you, Sumi. Um, right, so you've heard about the Green Grocers product and you've eaten it. You've heard about the audience that we're targeting. And you've also heard about the community that we create through our communications. I'm going to talk about a bit. I'm going to talk a bit about the sustainability principles that sit at the heart of our operations, and also how we contribute to local regeneration in the areas in which we operate. So we define sustainable food as being local, seasonal, healthy, and affordable. I'm going to explain a little bit about each of these criteria and what they mean for our sourcing policy. So firstly, local. We want to reconnect our customers with their food and where it's grown and increase access to locally produced food in a market that's flooded with imported supermarket produce. We also want to lessen the gap between farmer and poor, supporting small-scale farms and cooperatives as we grow. Secondly, food should be seasonal. It should be eaten with the seasons in which it's grown, and this is something that's been forgotten by modern Britain. 